on five an uncompromising picture of life on death row. Some viewers may be shocked by the views expressed and the strong language used. through the valley of the shadow of death, I should fear no evil, because I'm the baddest motherfucker in the jungle. They come to me, you prepare a table for me. The state of Texas wants my life, wants the man in the cell next to me like, in every other life, on death row. Why, may you rest in peace, I hold y'all, breath I told y'all, death controls y'all, big don't fall y'all, uh, I spit phrases that'll thrill you. You're nobody till somebody kills you. You're nobody till somebody kills you. Um, and you think about dying, you gonna die any damn way. You know, since then, they're getting sick over it. There's a certain kind of freedom in knowing that you're totally screwed. I'll walk up that gurney and help them strap me in. Oh. Oh. Casino. Once they crank this thing back up, this killing machine, they're gonna just start taking people out real quick. We're about one hour away from being exactly seven days from my execution. We're all in a high-speed chase through the death chamber. It's like Ed Sullivan used to say, it's time for the really big show, you know? Still, as far as I know, the one and only. Yeah. See, I don't think there's another death row garment factory or death row factory working. Thank you very much for your work and your participation and help throughout the last 10 years. And we look forward for many, many more years. Y'all enjoy your ice cream, cake, soda water. Thank you very much for your work and your participation and help. <laughs> We're all death row. You know, we can be black, we can be white, we can be Jew, we can be Aryan, we can be whatever we want to be, but we're all death row. We have no parole dates. Our final outcome is one thing, one thing only. Either we walk off a of death row and get commuted to life sentence or we die. <laughs> Nobody ever raises their eyebrows or raises questions as to why there's so many hundreds of people on death row in Texas and still more coming down here. You know, one man gets killed on the table, they got another one to put right in his place. They're fixing to uh, fry everybody as soon as they can and make more room. We've been out here in this garment factory for 10 years huge stack of cards here. These are the people who started or worked out here that are dead now. They're not here anymore. Every one of these people were friends and co-workers. It's like they're straight out telling us, man, there ain't gonna be no just, we just gonna kill you. It don't make no difference, it don't matter. We just gonna kill you because it's been so long, we need to catch up. That's all you hear all night, all night, 24 hours a day is people screaming, different people fighting with their demons. I don't know exactly what it is they're doing, but that's all you hear is banging on the walls, banging on the bunks, banging on the steel mesh on the, on, on the bars. Just screaming, just screaming. I felt like I was losing my mind. I smashed everything in my cell, I broke everything, I threw everything away. I made up my mind I didn't need anything no more and I wasn't going to let them kill any more of my friends. I wasn't going to be a witness to any more of these killings. That night, I made up my mind I was going to go for that fence. I was going to make them kill me. Hey, 
My job is to make sure that they have the best possible treatment that they can get. In other words, it's, it's inhumane to just let them sit up here and go crazy or stay crazy if they are crazy. They, they, they're they entitled to some type of treatment. An alter ego of mine, Sarge, who, this, who I made this painting of, uh, killed my in-laws. And there's no treatment as far as the new medicine, Cozeril, for schizophrenia to help me to become just what I am here. Uh, so to end the suffering of myself and, of course, all involved, including my family and my in-laws, uh, I've chosen to waive my appeals. They have every intention on killing me. The warden has every intention on breaking me. I'm not an animal. I'm not a horse. I'm not here to be broke. Learn how to shut myself down. Learn how to quit feeling. Learn how to stop dreaming. Learn how to stop holding on to that hope. Learn how to survive in an abattoir. If you, if you ain't got no hope of survival, you're not going to make it here. Could you make it out there in that world if you didn't have a little hope? No, you couldn't. There's a lot of people be talking about one of these days, one of these days, fuck all that. I mean, if I was, if I was meant to die here, then I'm going to die here. Ain't nothing I can do about it. You got that in county jail? Yes, sir. Does that represent what? White supremacy. White supremacist? Yes, sir. I can't stand no niggers. And, you know, niggers usually don't fuck with you too much if they, if they know you don't like them from the start with. Fuck them if they do. Did you shoot him before you pump gas or after you pump gas? He got shot after. after, gas was after. I was in the world 18 years, 19 years. I, I, I doubt I'll be here that damn long. Yeah, every time you see a hundred men come here, it's a younger breed. Younger breed of people. Think different. They feel different. They act different. They are actually different in, 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 the, in society out there. You've got to have a hope and the willpower to keep struggling on, no matter what life deals you. If, if I was if, if I was going to be a quit quit on life itself, I'd have blown my brains out 25 to 30 years ago, but I didn't. Maybe I should have. I don't know. But it's the way, way my cards are stacked. I'm here. How can a person that thinks he's a man live in a cage for 20 years? I can't. I can't see that. I can't. I can't even begin to think, to realize me living in a cage for 20 years. I've did so much stuff in my life that the state of Texas couldn't execute me enough times to come out even. I'll tell you this much. The man was my ex-boss. He owed me money. I went to his house and I confronted him. He got out the money. He counted out my money. I got my money, put it in my pocket, and he pulled his gun on me. We wrestled for the gun. I shot him in the cheek. He sat there on the floor, and I put him up on the couch, and he told me to help me. I said, you're a little too late for help. So I shot him again. I knew that's what he would have done to me. This place is full of pussy boys. That's what it is. Everybody cries about, I got rights here, I got rights there, and we're going to make the county spend all this money. And All they got to do, they know what they did. They weren't crying about killing people or robbing people out there, but they get here and they cry, and they're living off the taxpayers, you know. I paid taxes for a lot of years. I'm not going to sit here and have my family pay taxes to kill me. What's your execution date? Uh, the, 20th, the 18th of September. Thank you.
think about it, maybe he's uh, accepted where he's at, doesn't want to be a part of it. I have no idea what goes through the man's mind. I've talked to him several times, uh, and I just think he don't want to be here no more, evidently. If he don't want to fight with his appeals and just let them drop, that's up to him. Uh, I think the other inmates kind of don't like it. They want everybody fighting for their life. I'm thinking about living. You think about living, right? Uh, uh, the whole world's thinking about living, right? I'm saying only the irrational individual, an individual basically who has been tortured to uh, the extent uh, that he's not even living anymore, wants to die. So he's not even a rational individual anymore, right? He's not even living, right? He's become a zombie, you see what I'm saying? He's one of the living dead, right? Everybody's got their own, own reason why they do different things. I guess Joe had his own. And he just wanted to get it over with as quick as possible. I prepared myself. I prepared my family the best I could. And I see the hurt in my father's face. Uh, it's just better to go ahead and get it over with. I know what I did was wrong, and I'm mad enough to admit it. Uh, I took a life. Well, I was, when I took that life, I was prepared to pay with mine. The average time an inmate spends on death row is about nine years. Everyone involved believes Gonzalez is a rare case, and his unexpected cooperation with the justice system has led to the quickest execution in Texas history. If I could go back at any time in my life and change anything, I wouldn't change anything. I enjoyed everything I've done. My life has to come to an end someday. I figure September the 18th. This is my 91st execution to witness uh, on behalf of the agency. This particular execution was somewhat unremarkable. Uh, very, uh, nothing out of the ordinary occurred from the others I've seen. Uh, he uh, had very little reaction. He said nothing other than no, sir, when asked if he had a last statement to make. He uh, breathed, exhaled heavily one time, and, and then went silent. Joe had told me that uh, he was hoping that it would rain on, on the day he died, the day he was executed. He got what he wished in more ways than one. They're going to start taking people out real quick. Just recently, March 12th, they took out a very close friend of mine named John Bearfield. It was like I could see him before he went down there to the walls unit to get executed. And he was looking around, you know, like this is the last time I'm gonna see this place. And you would think someone would be happy, you know. Man, I'm glad this is it, man. I don't never have to look at this place no more. But you could just tell by the look in his eyes, you know. That wasn't the case. He was saying, man, I don't wanna I don't wanna leave like this. I don't want it to end like this. As he was walking away, he turned around and looked at me, you know, he had the handcuffs behind his back. He was trying to turn. I saw him point his thumb up like this. And so when he turned and looked at me at that last moment and pointed his thumb to the sky, I knew that's what he was saying. See you on the other side, brother. Yesterday's executioner becomes today's victim. Ain't no telling who's going to be here and who's not. Who's next? Yeah. Who's next? Whichever cage to be put in the flesh or mind, there is a sin, crime. This right here is the same scenario as you take a man, put him on his hands and knees, and every day have a man with a gun at his head saying, well, is this the lucky day that I pop a cap in your head? We'll see many more, many more executions. I myself feel like 
at the very least, we're going to see 40 executions in 97. I believe. Now, I may be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But yeah, it, it is. Uh, it is most definitely going to gear up. They can start killing two or three a night. As of right now, we are about one hour away from being exactly seven days from my execution. Uh, I'm scheduled to be executed after six o'clock on uh, April the 2nd of this year, 1997. Uh, my appeal has run completely. I'm not aware that there's anything left that can be done in the courts, although I do know that there are some attorneys working on my behalf and they may be able to find something that they can use on my appeal. But as of right now, the Supreme Court has ruled against me on the last stage of my appeal, so I'm not aware that there's anything left for me. He told uh, that this is where the fun is going to begin, and he made Jennifer take all of her clothes off. Uh, made her made her back up to him, and uh, she's screaming and, and, and begging and ask, asking, asking him not to do this. Uh, I really didn't see what happened. I, he made me lie on the floor. Um, from what I understand, he, he, he attempted to sexually assault her and she kept screaming and pushing away and it just got to be more and more fun for this person. He got mad at Jennifer because she kept struggling with him and telling him no. I remember counting off five shots. I shot myself in, in the left in the uh, left arm and in the back of the head. He shot Jennifer in the head. He shot her in the arm when she tried to put her hand up to protect herself. We're taking a half for a nine. A tooth for a tooth. Just like they say in the Bible. You wonder about the darkness you placed in another human soul. You think about the darkness you put there, and you wonder how you could be so inhumane to do something like it. I have nightmares about hurting others, the pain I've caused. In a lot of ways, being executed is easier than spending the rest of your life dealing with things that you've done. You know, anger, anger pushes all the way from the top and, and, and it goes down. Yeah, everybody down here, one time or other, pulled a sheet up over their head and cried for the victim in the, in the crime. That's right. Uh, when Dave goes, I'll pull a sheet up over my head and cry for Dave, too. That's right. Dave's like my brother. I mean, like, we've, we've had good times together. We've had arguments together. You know, we've the same thing we do with a brother or sister. He was a yuppie, you know. Yeah, that's <laughs> we his call name. Him. We call we him call the yuppie. Him. Yeah, we yuppie, call him you know? the yuppie. And uh, he voted for Bush. He's the only person I've ever met that ever yeah. voted, you know. So. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, he's such a likable guy. You know, it doesn't make sense to kill him. You know, he's not a threat to anybody. Getting this date like he is, and him being down there in the lockdown cell, we it's just like doing, he, he's just like on his deathbed, man. And we can't be there with him. I wish I could be surrounded by my friends there at the end, but I know that uh, they'll be with me in their spirits, and I know that I will achieve a level of immortality in the memories of my friends and my family, and that's a comfort to know as well.
inmate Herman uh, attempted to uh, commit suicide by uh, cutting his uh, wrist and, uh, as well as his throat. Uh, he managed to uh, take a piece of a uh, razor out of a disposable razor that is standard issue to the inmates and, and inflict the damage. Fortunately, it wasn't severe uh, and, and, and he's in good condition. How will it affect the execution schedule? It will have no effect on, on the schedule whatsoever. The inmate uh, talked to him yesterday, saw him yesterday. Uh, we got him together with a psychologist. Uh, he seems uh, to be in good condition, both mentally and physically. And so so the, the, it will have no effect on the execution schedule. Goes ahead. Goes ahead. Stop the executions now. We're here tonight because we oppose this murder that's going to take place, we oppose all premeditated murder. So why is the state of Texas murdering in our name? All of you are murderers. From the doctors and the medical personnel that put the needle into the arm. To the gray-shirted guard that escorts the victim onto the gurney. You're murderers. 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 All of you. You are murdering David Lee Harmon. After six o'clock, a bunch of us got together and went out and kind of said goodbye, you know, I mean, like, Dave was a, a, a airplane nut, you know, I mean, he loved to fly, and that's how I said goodbye was, hey, catch that big bear coot that you wanted, and truck on, brother, you know. Uh, just for lead-in purposes, this is the uh, 110th person to be put to death in Texas since they resumed the death penalty in 1982. And he's the third person this year so far. Okay, here we go. In three, two, one. Convicted killer David Lee Herman was put to death by lethal injection while victim Jennifer Burns' family watched. Herman said it was horrible and inexcusable to take a life. He said killing is wrong by an individual and by the state. Herman said, quote, to all of my family and friends, I love you and I'm going home, unquote. Herman was executed for the murder of Burns, killed during a robbery in 1989. Her father, mother, sister, and Harold Griffin, wounded during the robbery, watched as Herman died. Members of Herman's family chose not to attend. Randy Coffey for CBS News, Huntsville, Texas. All right. You bet. Talk to you later. Bye. It gave me some sort of peace until he tried to turn it around on us. Um, and I was glad he looked at me. I was really glad that he looked up at us because I did not expect him to do so and he didn't have to do that. Um, I wish he hadn't spoiled it by um, telling us that if we felt better because we helped the state take another life, you know, but he did, and if that's what he felt, that's okay, too. There's no sense of remorse whatsoever. Right. The man committed the crime. He murdered my daughter. He has now been executed. I don't necessarily feel great that uh, no. he has been executed, but uh, the state has carried out uh, uh, the decision of the court, and uh, that is it. The death row men are housed out at the Ellis unit, which is 12 miles outside of town. Did they ever really say dead man walking? Uh, no, here it was always going to see Sparky. Mm -hmm. And Sparky is the inmate nickname for the electric chair. 
it's it too easy on these criminals now. They got to do something to change it. Uh, they gonna have to put a fence around Texas and lock it up. There's not very many choices. We have the college, we have the prison, and that's about it. You see people that you've grown up with and they don't, um, they make a lot of bad choices and they do a lot of things wrong. I wouldn't have expected to see them down here. But I knew that, you know, eventually down the line, uh, it's going to catch up to them. You kind of feel bad for them, but you don't really feel sorry because they had, they had the choice. It's weird dealing with them knowing that you used to be a certain way out in the world, but now it's totally different. You have to have a kind of a work respect for each other. As far as what was going on in the old neighborhood, what you used to do, that's gone. All right, Cole. <laughs> All right. You got nothing to say to him? He's just a con artist. Ain't nobody no con artist. All right. And what you gonna try and get out of Miss Gordon today? A telephone call? I'll a legal you. busy way? I'll tell you some ice. Some ice? Uh uh. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Corn artist. Now everybody on the wing is hot. It's hot. It's about 98 degrees outside, but he want me to bring him ice, just him. That's what I call a corn artist. Putting a bad rap. <laughs> well, they searched myself. And what did they part? Find a $100 bill. And what would you do with a hundred dollars on death row? <laughs> Can't tell you that. I mean, it's just like a holiday inn, you know. You can come in and buy anything at the counter you want to buy. You know, they can make their own homemade wine, you know. It's not convinced they're high price liquor, but it can do the same thing as the regular, regular liquor. You know, weed, anything they want, crack, they can get anything down here they want. You know, you can make a weapon out of sharpening it down into a sharp object. And there you go right there, a weapon. I was thrust into a situation where I was outside with a person that had, had threatened me and it, it became a very uh, troubling to me and it was a matter of time before one of us was going to make a, uh, get hurt. He had got a screw and filed it down, stabbed an inmate in the temple. And then it was like he jumped up and down on top of the inmate. You know, he just brutalized the inmate, beat him, just beat him, jumped up and down on top of him. Choked him, you know, anything, anything that you want to imagine to do to a person, that's what he does. I got, had reason to believe that this man was going to come out there and try to harm me, and it just so happens that I, I uh, took the initiative and I struck out at him before he had a chance to strike out at me. And be, when it was over with, this man was dead. One of those type of things where, like, you know, you're gonna always question yourself, especially after you see something like this. You know, is this job made for me? Is this something I want to come in and see every day? You know, is this something I want to deal with every day? What's the dress code? What do you have to wear? Oh, you can wear what you want to wear. Wear some. As long as you just don't wear your gray suit. Don't just party in the county jail. Bring everything that you can to wear. Pay them coming down, they don't begin to play. Have so much sympathy for the death row inmates. You see all the movie stars out there supporting them and everything, but people can't even imagine what we like. What would you like to get urine thrown on you? 
For exactly. nothing. For nothing. For doing your job. They don't or care. feces they don't thrown on you. It's they don't happened. Care. It's happened 50 times since they I've been there. Every day. You wind don't. up. You're walking down the run. You're escorting an inmate down the run. You don't have a shield or anything with you on G-wing. You look over your side, and about that time, you see a razor blade come out in somebody's hand. There's nothing you can do about that. Every day, you walk down a road. You don't know if you're going to get shanked. You, you have no idea. They don't care. They're condemned to die. They don't care to go through you to get somebody else for another inmate. They will go through you, cut you to get somebody else. You're nothing to them. There's any possible chance any day that you could sit there, you could be cut, you could be spit on, thrown on, anything. The definition of a good day is walking home. They're starting to line the dates up pretty strong now. I mean, David's got his for the third, mine is for the 16th. There's another guy's for the 14th, a couple of days ahead of mine. And then they just gave a guy a couple of cells down the run here a date. He got it Saturday for May the 12th. an execution next next week, April 3rd, next Thursday. Uh, it's a very serious day. I will proclaim my innocence to my, my dying breath because I am. If they execute me on April the 3rd, it in, in no way will be an execution. It will be a cold-blooded, calculated murder. This is this is where we are right now. We um, we filed. Uh, you know, we have the execution date is on Thursday, and we we file habeas applications in both counties as of last week and ask them for stays. But I'm still optimistic, really, that we're going to have we're going to get a stay. Yeah, I'm I'm optimistic about that from from the courts. You know, I have kids of my own, and I know that if one of them were murdered, that I would want to probably kill the person who done it, but that doesn't make me right. You know, I didn't, I'm not God, so I shouldn't take their life. It's not up to me. I believe in him, I know, I know he didn't kill these children. I just, I know it. There's too much evidence proving he didn't. And I couldn't love a murderer anyway, I don't think. Tell him I said, hey, give a little extra love to him. Okay. Call all the boys. Oh, well. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, take bye care. bye. The truth's being brought out in, in a lot of ways right now, but if it don't save my life, okay, uh, I've, I've already gotten the vow from people, the promise from people, that even if they do execute me, they will continue pushing this until everyone knows the truth. You know, it's kind of a feeling of numbness, I, because we're all brought up to believe that the right thing will happen and uh but what scares me is is that i realize now i'm you know i'm 54 years old the right thing does not always happen i'm not an opponent of the death penalty uh in fact i support the death penalty but but i only support it of course for people that we know are guilty and, and, and I was under the impression there had to be a preponderance of evidence, not a preponderance of evidence, guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Here, it's just the opposite. He, he's innocent almost beyond a reasonable doubt. Hello? Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, you got a call in to uh, D. Smith? Okay, good. Uh, well, what I really want to do is find out if uh, Kip Averett has talked to the governor today. I know he talked to the governor once already, okay? If he hasn't, I want him to go on over there and talk to the governor right away and tell him, you know, we got less than six hours here. 
uh, and uh, at the present here, they're proceeding right along. I'll be out in the visiting room with my family probably till around 12 or 12.30, and then sometime between there and 3 o'clock, I guess, they'll, they'll take me over to the walls room. saying that everybody's innocent on death row. I'm not saying that. Punishment, we should punish people. But fundamentally, death penalty is wrong. And I believe this. I believe that this man next door to me is here just like a few others that I believe. Because we're sacrifices. This is, this is the only logical conclusion that I can come up with is that this man is a sacrifice. And cases like him, he's not the only one. Cases like him are gonna come before us again and again. There's been a, a study that shows that some maybe 35 people had later been proved to have been innocent of their crime. And society's view today is that if we get nine out of 10 right, that's okay. Hey, this has been one long, tough battle. What scares me is I think we're going to lose it. I want my brother to know that I'm there for him to the very end. I want him to know that, uh, you know, he can look and see me there and know that I believe in him and that everybody in that room on our side believes in him. I pray that, that I'll get a stay and everything, that all the truth will come out and people people will see. But we never know what, what God uses us for or, or anything. If It could be that my execution goes through and because of the enormous evidence in my case to my innocence and stuff, that this might be the tool if I'm executed that people say, wait, something's wrong here and put a stop to this madness. Stuart, how are you? Well, uh, everybody's getting kind of nervous and anxious here. Uh, how, have you heard anything from the uh, parole board yet? Okay, thank you, Stuart. I appreciate it a lot. Bye-bye. We got turned down by the uh, parole board. Yeah, 17 to 0, one abstention, uh, denying the application.
well, Lori and Gordon. At 6.32 tonight, the state of Texas pronounced the death of David Wayne Spence, uh, death by lethal injection. And I was just inside there, inside the execution chamber, where Spence was put to death. We were let in. It was around uh, 6.22, waited a little while, as they put him on the gurney, strapped him in, and put the uh, needles in. Henry Spence was taken from the holding cell at uh, two minutes past six and strapped to the gurney. He, he maintained his innocence throughout uh, his statement. Uh, at one point, he, uh, addressing the, the family of the victims, he says, I swear to you, I haven't killed anyone. Uh, Brad Montgomery, the, the brother of the victim in this case, uh, responded by saying, just die, just die. Um, at another point, uh, Spence said he, underst he understood uh, the pain the, f the family of the victim was feeling, and Brad responded by saying, no, you don't. Uh, that was the only uh, response from the family. Um, Herman, con uh, excuse me, uh, Spence continued uh, by saying, I love you, I miss you. This is addressing his family, friends. Uh, the last, his last words, uh, uh, his last words were, uh, I'm going, baby, uh, to uh, those words being directed to his girlfriend. That's a good day. <laughs> That's a, well, 632, it got better. The day got better. Life got better. And I'll wake up in the morning with a smile on, your face. A smile on my face and no problem gone. I really didn't experience any kind of big earth-shattering happening. I, I just, I just think that it was a time to happen, and I agree that that David had absolutely no emotion today about what was happening to him any more than he had emotion about what he did 14 years and eight months ago. The only thing that it does for me is uh, wish that it was harder than what it is so for them easy. i mean it was it was so easy so painless it was just going to sleep you know if we were going to change anything let's make them suffer <laughs> I started watching the news and listening to the radio at the same time and i heard the comments that uh the relatives of the victims that David Spence was accused of killing, the teenagers, and they said that uh, the only thing they were saddened by was that he would not suffer in the same way that their loved ones had suffered. And uh, I think David Wayne Spence went through a lot of suffering. Yeah, he wasn't all bloody or cut up or those type things. But in here, you die a thousand deaths. You die a death every day. If they want to torture somebody, torture them. If they're calling for a person's death, they're getting it. What's going to be worse, to put us in an electric chair and as soon as the, the, the electrical charge hits you, you're numb, but you see sparks and flames fly out of a person's head, to take them out and, and, and shoot them in a firing squad, as soon as the bullet hits you, the impact's going to knock you unconscious, you're not going to feel anything anyway. The only way they can torture you is to cut your fingers off, cut your ears off, do things like that. And like I said, if they want to push for that, then I feel sorry for society. For them to look at the individual in prison and say, I lost my family. I lost my friend. The fact is, you're gonna lose more of your family. You're gonna lose more of your friends as long as you don't have time to sit down and understand the problem itself. You have 428 individuals on Jeff Row. Is it more safer in society? I don't think so. We may have 30 executions this year. We're going to get new inmates in. If we execute two, we'll have four in next week. That's how it is. It's going to continue, continue, continue.
what's happening there. It's another day on death row. You got anything you want to say to these people? I had a, a vision as we sort of surface dive into the 21st century for a society of 250 million who claims a higher form of law, a superior form of law, to eliminate five thousands of its own members. But you woke up and everything was all right, right? In a, in a form of what is vengeance against itself. Uh, it seemed like um, it wasn't justice, but perverse entertainment. All right, well, we're going to move on a little bit there. You have a nice day, all right? Another Texas death row inmate was executed tonight. Anthony Ray Wesley was put to death by the second Lincoln. execution in as many days. Death Clarence Lang a Dallas man became the, the third inmate executed on Texas death row this Texas week. Texas executed its fourth killer of the week tonight. Larry executed White executed in Texas tonight. Patrick Rogers was convicted a of killing a rapist was executed on Texas death row tonight. Yeah. Kenneth Bernard Harris is the second. A double inmate. execution on Texas death row tonight. Tying a record set some. As I walk through the valley in the shadow with death steps continuous. Dead man walking the set, sweat dripping. Listen to the pound of the drum. Heart beating uncontrollably. The poor man's son, nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Why? Dig it. It's the execution. The song is stereo. Wicked. The priest kicking. The whole Word, but you ain't listening. Your mind and your spirit got your ears and not Tell me who you is. Nobody. How about when you was a badass kid? Nobody. Or when you did that foul shit you shouldn't have did? Nobody. Now that you want that rope, you all up in the spotlight. Tell me who you is. Nobody. How about when you was a badass kid?